last living cell of a dead body must be alive. John, why don't you open us up in prayer? That's Chucky, I'm sorry. Chucky. call from Billy Clark this afternoon or earlier he we, we planned on doing some things here and uh, Jesse tested positive for uh, COVID again this afternoon so they're all staying home I think it's a good good decision it's just I hate to see Jesse's been sick for a couple weeks now it seems like so keep the Clark household specifically Jesse in prayer and um Somebody put out a prayer request for a Jody Hamrick. I cannot remember who that was. Does anybody remember? She's got surgery today to remove a tumor. So Steve Simeon has asked for prayer for a friend of his, David Wisson. He's got a growth of some sort on his chest. He's um, lost, and Steve is asking for wisdom for the doctor and a chance to witness to him. Uh, we need to keep Crystal um, in prayer to, for tomorrow at 12.30. She's having an MRI, and she has an implant, a heart implant, so it's, it used to be a no-no for magnetic res, um, imaging because it would pull that leads and so forth. They've got some new techniques, but she's still a little worried. And she's in the field. She's a radiologist. So, and the colt had a bacterial, um, or had a bacterial stomach bug. They filled him with fluids and antibiotics, and he's improving. So that's a good thing. Maybe we'll see them there. Howard Hunter wrote an um, email the other day. He was traveling to a meeting, and had just gotten off like an interstate where he's doing 60 or 70 miles an hour. And he got on a side street and the wheel came off. So he's just grateful that it uh, didn't happen on the main road. And I don't think they know what stop and go means in the Philippines. So it's got to be an experience. It's like driving in Mexico City. You know, you could have a Humvee and still not make it through the intersection. So, but anyway, keep them in prayer. All right, salvation. Anybody get a chance to witness anybody this week? Okay. Uh, one question, David Borman, did you follow up on that, his sister? Okay, all right. Pardon me? Uh-huh. The one he's purchasing? Okay. Um, what's his first one? First name? Well, let me go look. It is Darren Ewing. I have it here. Okay, this guy's um, living in California, coming to work as a tax attorney for a corporate. Yeah. That's what um, David Hempkin does. Uh, you want to, with his, his father's name is Dan, Dan Hempkin, yeah. Um, and he, he works in the post office on some kind of mechanical thing. Anyway, long story short, he called one of the, his son was going to school at Georgetown. We picked him up. He started coming here, and he got a he got a job with a friend of ours as a clerk. Now he's a, he's a partner in the oldest law firm in Shreveport. In what six seven years, he did all right for himself. Smart kid. Ex-girlfriend, so that's for salvation. 
uh, Darren Ewing. And it's kind of a good testimony there. Pastor was with him. Uh, he kind of got right with God again about a year ago, and he was in a relationship with this girl who's lost and doesn't want anything to do with it. And um, he said, well, I can't really do this. And I mean, that's, that's a big decision to make, you know, especially when you're in the world and you're stepping outside that circle and then you walk away from that. Well, that's um, keep him in prayer, and he, he, may, he may decide to come here. Um, and we'll just pray that he does. Sickness. Anybody have anybody for sickness? We're all healthy. We've, well, we've got, an, we've got enough sick people in this church, though. Uh, anybody hear about is, is um, Betty's husband getting any better? Do we know? Okay. All right, continue to pray for Jim Hill. And others, we've got, yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Give me your mother's name, Ruth. All right, Ruth Wampler is, is Vicki's mom, um, and she was in an assisted living home, or, and the entire place, with the exception of four residents, had COVID, so she flew to Mountain, came to spend with Vicki, left one germ pot, come into another one. <laughs> so, anybody have anything else? Anybody else for sick? It's good to see you, all of you. Well, there's a couple, there's about seven of you missing, looks like. <laughs> um, pray for the Smoots there in Ohio. Um, they've sent a couple, she's posted a couple videos. They look like they're doing pretty good out there. Is that where her son is a music guy? That guy, I, I love the way he, he plays piano and the way he leads singing. He's on it. Like, no, that's, there's another one, isn't it? This is the, the guy that played piano over here. Okay, all right. Um, but he's, he's got it going on. I like it. All right, unspoken. Work situation. You stopped working? Oh, okay. All right. Go get that job in Richmond he was bidding the other day? I got you. I got you. I don't know how you can bid anything today. Two by four costs you $6 today, $12 tomorrow. Who can, who can do that? You know? Is there a rider you put in your proposal? You'd have to. Okay. Um, on the road. Howie's coming back when? First of September. Okay. I'll be going when he gets here. <laughs> um, street preaching is this Sunday, correct? I don't have a date on my thing here, but should. Yep. Okay. Okay, all right. Well, I don't have an up-to-date. It's my fault. I'm at fault, so I'll take the blame. Anybody have anything else? All right. Uh, we've got Steve in Jersey. Pray he doesn't drink the water and get sick. Uh, he's praying for some family members out there. And uh, he's going to be tr returning, I think, the first, first of August. or Maybe he'll be going another week or so. 
keep him in prayer. Got a lot of people out. We've got the smooths on travel. Uh, just pray for them. Pray for your members of your church. You know, lift them up. You never know. I mean, that old man used to pray for me, and I could feel it. So I knew when he was doing it. So, um, Brother Jason, why don't you pray for the prayer list and pastor's message tonight? To fall asleep anywhere. I'm serious. I can have a cup of coffee, drink half the cup of coffee, sitting in my recliner kind of thing, and I'm asleep. <laughs> and I and I drop my heavy computer, my laptop. It would have been fine if it had just dropped down and butt it, but it dropped down and the point of my computer hit my ankle. And sort of did a little damage there. So I will not be doing any two-step tonight. Amen? Um, pray for those that are on the road. Jim's right. Um, who did? Joseph. Oh, wow. You still praying, Miss Jackie, about uh, what to do about the sign thing? Is that what your deal is? Ma'am? Okay. I, I understand. Um, that's that what to do when you really don't know what to do. You know what you do? Be patient. Be prayerful. <laughs> that's all. What else are you going to do? You know, be pliable. Lord, okay. This is, you ever been, anybody ever been in that situation where you, you know, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? It looks good, Lord. It looks great. Go to First Samuel, if you will, tonight, 17. I'm not going to keep you very long. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, the vacation Bible school next week. I hope you can bring some of the, the youngins. Hopefully, you can. Uh, Looks like you have one or two. Um, don't forget, what's the name of your church, Bible Baptist? Pray for, for the church over there trying to start out, and it's, it's tough. Uh, I mean, look at all these years. It's still tough. Um, but you know what you do? Lord, and let, just let be in God's hands. Let him take care of it. Let him do what he does. And... Um, You ever think uh, God really hasn't given you anything? He gave you salvation, right? So he give, get, I give unto him eternal life, right? You ever think about that? You ever look at that thing and say, well, Lord, I don't have anything. Why would you call on me? And uh, you look down, and everybody has something. I'm not talking about the gift of giving or the gift of gab or all that nonsense. I'm talking about everybody has something that they can do for God. And the problem is, is we complain more about using what God gave us. 
You say, well, I don't have any talent. Well, you might have more talent you, than you think. Um, but you ever just stop to think, just use what's in your hands? Just use it? Whatever God has there, just take that and use it. Look at this thing, if you would, please. Look at chapter 17, verse 38. Pick it up in 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the, uh, excuse me, started in the right place, <clears throat> paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistines. And Saul said unto David, go, the Lord do be with thee. <laughs> I, I, can, I can sort of see Saul like, all right, man, you're going to do it. Get out of the camp. Just get out of here. I don't want Goliath coming up here. I mean, go fight him. You want to fight him, go do it, man. <laughs> David's bold. David's very bold. In verse 38, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put it, a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he uh, armed him with the coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with those, these, for I have not proved it, proved them. And David put them off him. Isn't that an amazing thing? You ever try to go in somebody else's welfare, somebody else's power, somebody else? Well, if Brother Jason can do it, I can definitely do that. You don't know that. God might gear him up just for that. Verse 40, and he took his staff in his hand and those him five smooth stones out of the brook, and he put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even the scrip, and his sling was in the hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And this is an amazing story. You may be seated. I don't want to keep you up all day. I'm going to read a little bit more and go over some notes of this, but I think this is an amazing story, and, and I'm just titling it, just use what God gives you. You'd be amazed what you can do with the gifts that God has given you. I'm not talking about the gift of tongues, the gift of healing. I'm not talking about that nonsense. You have something that God will give you, will help you with, uh, or he would have never put David out to go against Goliath, would he? You know, the first thing I noticed about David, he had more faith in, in God than he did a fear of Goliath. Amen. Your Goliath is out there, and, you know, the Bible says that the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom, whom he may devour. But the deal of it is, if God puts you somewhere, God will take care of you wherever you are. God will take Brother Hunter. He's in the Philippines. I've never been there. Honestly, I don't want to. Uh, I'm not interested in it. Uh, I don't know anything much about it other than that he's been over there probably off and on 30 years, I guess. It's been that long, I think. It's been quite a while. I know that. But the deal of it is that God always sits where he puts you, he'll take care of you. Amen? And that's a fact. And look at verse 41. The Philistines came out and drew near unto David, and the man that bared the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him. Well, what was he going to do? I mean, um, I, I'm not going to pick on Jason, but Jason's a pretty big guy. And he say, can Jason whip you? All he has to do is fall on me. That would whip me. I mean, I'm, I'm just being comparison to Goliath and David. David's a young lad. Goliath's a big guy. You know who should have been the one going out to stand before him? Saul. Saul was not a small guy. Saul was a big man. You know, I preached to you about uh, the armor. Saul offered David, well, take my armor and go out. Well, why would you want to do that unless they would say, oh, maybe it's Saul out there fighting when it's really David. Take credit for it. There's a lot of that nonsense going on. And David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. In other words, what's this little punk coming out here getting in my face for? And in the day's vernacular. And the, Philist, uh, and the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog? Yeah. That thou comest to be to me with, with staves 
and the Philistine cursed David by his gods, look who he's dealing with. You serve somebody, you either serve the big G or the little G. That's who Saul's serving, isn't it? And the Philistine said to David, come to me, and I will give thee thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and, and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But look at, look at this. Don't ever forget who you represent. But what? I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. Well, the day will, uh, the day, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine he uh, head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the, of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, and all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. What great confidence he had. Father, we pray you bless uh, this time in the message. Pray, God, you'll use it that it might encourage us, Lord. We certainly don't, we realize we're not a match for uh, the devil. We're not trying to head up to that or even get that. But, Lord, when you set us out to do something, you never set us on a path that you're not protecting. You never set us on a path that you don't provide. And, Lord, that we realize that uh, there's, a, there's a great victory to be won at the end, that you might be looked up and that you might be prominent and preeminent in all things in Jesus' name and for his sake. So David goes out there and he faces this. And you say, well, if the Lord's with you, the Lord ever tell you to do something and the odds look pretty great. I mean, he ever impressed upon you, I want you to go do this, but the odds are just like, wait a minute, Lord. I mean, how am I, how am I, how am I, do you, do you ever say that to yourself? How am I going to do it? Did you ever stop to think when David was sent out, God wasn't trying to figure out how David was going to do it. He realized he already had it done. All David had to do was have faith in what God told him to do. I mean, it looked to the average individual, it'd be like, you know, some of these guys that play on the offensive line for the Washington Redskins. Some of those guys are massive. Joker, Jacoby was a big guy, like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. I mean, 325, 50 pounds, and moved like a gazelle man. You say, well, David would have been in trouble. No, if God be before, if God be for you, who, be, who can be against you? Who can stop you? The forces of... You ever stop to think about that? Well, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, well, you can't, so get out of the way. God instructs you to do it. God impress for you to do it. Do it! I don't want to bring old things up, but I've had people come up and say, I've tried, I've tried and tried to quit drinking. Okay, quit trying. Give it to God and say, Lord, I, Lord, that's a problem in your life, then okay, I got a problem with smoking. Okay, you got a problem with smoking? You ever tried, you ever tried to put it on God and say, Lord, I need this off of me? You ever tried, my big reason for wanting to quit when I first started out was I, couldn't, I didn't think I could witness to somebody with a cigarette in my mouth. I, well, if God can save me, couldn't he take them cigarettes away from you? I'm not picking on your little things. Those are very minor things, very unhealthy things, but they're minor things. I'm talking about that they're the Goliath that's in your life, that's in the path of you getting to where God wants you to do and the achieving the things that God wants you to do. That Goliath is standing prominent over the God you serve. And God says, hey, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, doesn't he? I can do it anything. I can take care of this. I can do this. But you're going to have to have more faith in God than fear of Goliath. And that's a problem, isn't it? Because Goliath goes about as Roy and lion. But God is the lion of the tribe of Judah, is he not? So the thought I'm trying to get to you is this, that David, it looked like the odds against David were insurmountable, and they were. Everything in this world 
just about is against you walking for God. Everything in this world is about you trying to keep yourself right with God. That's why I admired this young man so much. He said, you know, I, I got right with God, and I figured I just wasn't going to play the game. I was going to walk the walk. And what a blessing it is to meet someone like that says, I have decided. You know that song? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Yeah, Brandon, we need to get that attitude around Christians today. I have decided. Why? Because, listen, if God be for me, who can be against me? You, you, you sing the song, Oh, Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. It, you really have victory in him? His victory is out there for you. He, listen, the proving of this armor. David, for the first time, says one thing, I cannot. And what you do is, Lord, I cannot do it except you're with me. I can't do it. I can't, Ms. Jack, I can't make a decision without you guiding me. I need wisdom. The Bible says, Brother Andy, if any man lacks wisdom, let him what? Ask of God. You know what that means? I'm not going to, if I lack wisdom, I'm not going to run to Jim and say, hey, Jim, I need some wisdom. He'd probably give it to me. But the one who's going to give me the wisdom I really need needs to be God, isn't it? He doesn't know the whole circumstance. He doesn't know everything God's trying to do. But still the thought of it is Goliath was a type of this old world, and it's humongous, man. I mean, he is a, a, a foe that has not been defeated henceforth. But now this little old runt comes up there upon what did he follow? The word, did he not? The, I come in the name, I was sent by God, and buddy, if I'm sent by God, you're going down. Hey, amen. I love the attitude. Amen. I love it. Well, he comes in there and he says there, uh, has great insight. But first of all, don't try to be something you're not. Don't go in there and try to be all smart, Alec. Just go in there and stand up, and don't try to be something you're not. Don't um, be afraid to acknowledge your limitations. Don't be afraid to say, Lord, you know me, I'm scared. Amen. You think these, all these guys went in there as bold as it could be? David was afraid. Fear is part of the game. It's something that's built within us. But go in there and do what he told you to do. Don't try to be something you're not. Don't be afraid to acknowledge your limitations. I cannot wear. Well, I don't think God expects you to wear my armor, and I don't think he expects me to wear yours. You need to wear your own armor. Why? Because typically you're going to be more proficient with those things that you've been accustomed to. You know you better than me, but God knows you better than anybody. Don't be afraid. So what kind of armor is it? Well, there's an armor of carnality. You know what carnality is? Are you not yet carnal? Didn't Paul say that to the Corinthian church, the most carnal church that was around? Amen. Did he not tell him that? Uh, he acknowledged his limitations, but the armor of carnality. How about the armor of disobedience? You, know, you could uh, have everything you need to fortify, and as a Christian, you do. You have a Holy Spirit of God dwelling in you, right? Okay, uh, and what's the Holy Spirit there for? Isn't he there to lead you, to guide you, to direct? Have you ever went to the Holy Spirit of God and said, hey, uh, I need some guidance here. Any man lacks wisdom? Lord, I don't know what to do. I I've got an idea. I just want you to give me the, the guidance that I need in order to achieve what you want. Give me the strength. There's all kinds of it going on there. Acknowledge your limitations. I cannot. But don't try to uh, do something God didn't call you to do. And there's where failure comes in. He told him to do one thing, go stand before Goliath. Who did the rest? Yep. Who provided the rock? I, I always look at it like this, Jim. He, Goliath, gets, he gets up there and he's big old monster guy getting like it. This little runny guy about my size down there. 
And he, he's looking up. He said, you little squirt, I'm going to smash you like a bug. And he goes, whoosh, 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 takes that rock and lets her loose. And the Lord gets on that rock says, now, come on, a little to the left here. <laughs> little, elevate a little bit. Hits that bad boy right dead in the center, and he's gone. Say, how do you know that, preacher? Well, God provided. Hebrews 2, 12 and verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every, every weight. Say, what are those weights? You ever work out with weights? You ever work out with them? Those are things that are designed to wear you down. I'm going to tell you, you're going to wear down before the weight will. You got it. I got a set of barbells, dumbbells. It takes a dummy to go pick them up at my age. But I try to pick up some of them, and it's, you know what I've noticed about them? They're always ready for me to pick them up. They always weigh the same. Sometimes they feel like more. And uh, they don't do anything for you if you don't pick them up. Stupid stuff, but that's the way it is. And the thing about it is you've got to realize what is that weight that's dragging you away from the will of God, from the way God wants you to be, and the direction God's trying to get you in. Everybody wants to be victorious in this Christian life, I would assume. Amen? Nobody wants to go through things. I mean, that poor guy that uh, just, I, I can't remember him, his preacher just lost his daughter, or lost his life trying to save his daughter, and I heard he saved her, but um, God will provide you with what you need in order to, to win in the battle that you're in. It's the point I'm trying to drive home to you. Um, the pebbles and the sling. Look at chapter 17. Look at verse 40. Look at verse 40. Chapter 17, 40. And he took the staff in his hand and, closed, and chose him five smooth stones. Well, you know what the number five is, right? out of the brook, and he put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew back to the, uh, to the Philistines, and the Philistines came and drew near unto David, and the man that uh, bared the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy. He was just a little runt. And it must have really angered Goliath. I mean, come on, man. Give me something to fight with. This is no challenge. You're embarrassing me. That's what I thought on it. But the, he gets a sling and the staff. It, and this is all, the staff is a defensive weapon to start with, with the purpose of controlling sheep, controlling the dogs, etc. And that's what it was. But the sling, it was ex, uh, extremely accurate. These guys could, um, they could take a rock, put it in a sling, and from here to where Jason is could knock your eyeball out. That's how proficient they were with that. They had to use it. It was used, the rod was used to chase off wolves. The sling with the rock in it, they could hit a wolf in the right spot and knock him down dead. That's how proficient they were with it. And you know what? Rock of age is cleft to me. Let me hide myself in the... You know what that rock's all about? You know that rock that Moses put his hand on and hit it? He's supposed to speak to it? You have a rock available to you all the time. And what I'm trying to get across to you is what, when you think about use what God gave you, use the fact that God said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yea, I'm with thee always. If God puts you in a situation to where you have to fight a Goliath, he will help you and give you direction as long as you follow his way of doing it. More often than not, the reason Goliath brings us down is not God's fault. It's ours. We're afraid. We, we submit to it. You say, well, I've always done it that way. Buddy, I know. I know. I, I've been saved long enough. That I, I'm just so tired of me. I just don't even, most of the time, don't like me. I really don't. I'm like, man, what a dummy. I mean, you didn't do it. You say, preacher, you, yeah, okay, well, no, I'm perfect. <laughs> I'm perfect. I never make a mistake, never, never do anything wrong, never have the wrong attitude. 
wife's looking up in the ceiling. It's not going to fall yet, honey. Um, but the deal of it is the sling and the script and the st five shoe stones and the five, you know what the number five is all about. Uh, when you're battling for the Lord, use what God gave you to fight with. What is this? Use what God gave you to fight with. Your answers are here. Your fears are settled in here. The problem is we will consult everything but this. We will can talk to everybody but the Spirit of God. Use the tools God gave you. I do it. I, I quoted that verse, any man lack wisdom, let him ask God, give him liver to all men and breathe not. Okay, you say, well, what do you, Lord, this is Bob Dumb Joseph. You know me, you know what my, I, I, my thinking is, and you don't think the devil will try to get in the midst of that? He'll try to come in and act like the Lord and come in and try to give you some false things to think about. But listen, He took what God gave him and used them the way God told him to use it. You have a Holy Spirit of God, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. What is he in there for? What's he there for? What is the Holy Spirit there for you for? I'm sorry? I can't hear you all. Okay, he's going to guide you. Does he give you light? What was David's, pro David's uh, Paul's problem when he got put in jail and everything and all that he went through trying to get to Agrippa? What was Paul's problem? He was told not to go. Lord, you said any man. I'm going to go to your scriptures. If any man lacks wisdom, I'm to ask you to give me wisdom in a brave knot, right? Give me the guidance. Give me the wisdom. Lord, I don't want to make a mistake. I want to glorify you in whatever's done. You see, the flesh doesn't want to glorify God. It doesn't want to do things that the Lord, it doesn't want the Lord. You know what man wants? He wants to be recognized, not God. And so more often than not, we can be saved, have the Spirit of God dwelling in us, and snuff the Spirit of God or try to snuff it out. You ever try to do that? Oh, come on, Lord, leave me alone. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, look, brethren, you're not superwoman or superman, but I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me if I follow his direction. What's the book for? You know, I pick on men every Christmas. You know what men do? You pride. You got so much pride it's not even funny. Oh, I, I bought my granddaughter a brand new tricycle. Oh, there's directions, and I don't need those stupid directions. I don't need any directions. I don't need any. What do you think he gave them to you for? To be able to put the bike together. It's amazing. You, you got a, a three-wheeler, and two of the wheels are in front, and the one's in the back. No, it's not the way the bike goes. Why did you do wrong? Because you didn't follow the directions. I don't always follow them. You know what the problem is? We're not ready to yield to God. And you know what David was ready to do? He won, did he not? Did he not? And that not that when you go into a situation, isn't that your goal to win the battle? Well, why are we, go <laughs> why are we going in a different... He just went up to David and says, David, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Goliath and tell Goliath. And David's brothers are out there and everybody's out there saying, hey, hey, man, who do you think you are? I'm nobody, but I have a God who is able to do a seed in the abundant ball you think or ask. I have a God who sent me here, told me what to do. And that dude right there, that thing right there is defying my God and God's ability to use somebody like me. And God's going to use somebody like me just to show him he could take a little squirt like me and knock down a big Goliath. And that's what God will do for you. That thing that in your life it has got a grip on you, 
That thing will grab a hold of you, and it's a Goliath in your life. How do I get rid of the Goliath? By paying attention to what God tells you to do. He gave you a spirit. He gave you scripture. Did he not? If you have scripture and you have a spirit that of God and lead and direct you, then you have a Savior that loves you. Victory's already there. David didn't win it. Dave, David, got, he got, I guess you would say, the props for winning, but why did he win? Why did Goliath go down? Why did Goliath die? Because he paid attention to do what God told him to do. He didn't deviate from it, didn't walk away from it. He just did what God told him to do. Amen. David's prevail, you find it in chapter 17, verse 48 to 54. Um, David prevailed. David got the accolades. Why? You know what people will do? They'll look at you and they go, how come, Miss Vicki, you seem to be okay and everything seems to be good when, in fact, there's a turmoil going on, I'm sure, at times. And you look at it and say, if I only knew. But there is a God that I lean on. There is a God that says, come unto me, all you labor and heavenly, and I'll give you rest. There's a God saying, yea, I'll be with you always. Doesn't matter. So whatever the darkness might be, whatever the clouds might be, whatever the storms you're going through, I am God, and I can control it all. But all I want you to do is trust me. Trust me, David. You say, God, I'm not matched for him. Yep, I know you're not, David, but I, I am, and I want to use you to bring a big thing down. And I'm not suggesting your Goliath is small. I'm suggesting, suggesting to you that Goliath is something that times will just, I mean, it looks like there's no way out. Amen? But have death, hell, and the grave tried to defeat the Lord, did it? If the devil had his way, could it, would he have held him down there? Amen. Did he win? Because he won, you won. Amen. It's, it sounds stupid, but you win as long as you follow his direction, his spirit, his scripture, and he's your savior. God will take care of you. Amen. Say what happened? David come out of it? Goliath looked pretty bad, didn't he? That's why you can sing, Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Because if you pay attention to him and follow his direction, he'll bring you to it. He'll help you with it. And David came out with a great victory. And who got the accolades? David. <laughs> David's a great man of war. Well, you look pretty cool when you do what God tells you to do, and he comes out with a great victory, and you go, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> but my victory's in Jesus. That's who my victory's in. My, my family's like, what is this? What is, no, it ain't me, man. It's him. It's him. I'm not stupid enough to think that I have anything going. I know who I am. I know my limitations, I know what's going on, and brethren, my suggestion to you is this, you facing a Goliath, something that looks to you like, man, I, I, I've, I've been battling and battling and battling and ba I'm tired of battling, I can do all things, all things, no limitations, if I'm doing what God wants me to do and he sets me before Goliath, Goliath's coming down as long as I follow his direction. Spirit of God, the word of God, be obedient to what he told you to do. You get that thing down and uh, you can look at Lord and say, Lord, I did everything you said to do. Why did I fail? You know what the Lord will tell you? It ain't over yet. A scrimmage doesn't make a war end. You can get it done by the grace of God, but it's going to take him. 
Amen. Uh, I could tell you a lot of things, but I won't. Paul came through, became what he was because he's, he quit following himself in his direction and started following God. And God will use anybody that's willing. I know that a lot of years of my Christian life was miserable. And I said, I'm done with that, man. I, I ain't doing that anymore. I can't deal with it anymore. Get that junk away from me, Lord. You ever ride down the road and say, Lord, this, this thing's too heavy. It's too heavy. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it anymore. I, maybe you've never done it. I have. I've had battles, and I say, Lord, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. You can do it if you follow my direction. We put our faith in him for salvation, right? How about putting your faith in for security and victory? We sing, O victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. In him is life. You have it more abundantly. All right, uh, I told you I'm going to be short tonight, but Father, we love you. We pray, Father, that this little thing that we took, just the uh, part of it, Lord, that uh, you be glorified in it, that, God, that we realize that you're the one that won at Calvary. You're the one that won victory over death, hell, and the grave. You're the one that has gave us the promise, gave us a book, gave us the spirit. Lord, that you sustain us every day. God, we realize who you are and that I can do all things through you. And though things might have looked dumb to the brothers of David, they certainly wasn't stupid to David. He came out of there the way you wanted him to, praising you for the victory. And Lord, realizing that when we go through things and we come out victorious, that Lord, you would like us to thank you for it. Because Lord, in our flesh, we're nothing. So we pray now you'll give us to our home, give us rest to our bodies, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.